Hello, Kamilesh. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Great, good. You know, <laughs> life is a little different in this time of COVID-19, you know. Bharat, you are doing good? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. Okay, All great. Right. Yeah. So, India has not opened its borders yet? Uh, there are some flights, I think. That's all. Yeah, is going. Started. Mm -hmm. Have started going. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 But they they have been quarantined, you know, on their arrival. I think so, sir. For fourteen okay. or twenty days, I don't know. Ah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, Sanjana, how are you doing? I'm good. Great. So good to see you. Also, you know, pretty excited with JavaScript. Yes, sir. Any question about the last lecture? You know, we started, you know, like we took a jump start with JavaScript. So, uh, who is this free soul, you know, in our lecture? Oh, okay. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, so, any question I was asking, and Kamilesh was probably uh, telling me something. Uh, free soul is now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it now. <laughs> yeah. So so I was asking there any question from the last lecture. No. No? No question. If you'll not ask me question, I'm going to set a difficult exam, you know. <laughs> I would think that everybody is getting everything, so why not to ask them a difficult exam, you know? So, so if you just started the class, no sir, that's why. Okay, okay, great. So please do let me know, right? No issues. So just ask me questions. So, so people have kind of told me a lot that, hey, you know, have some software which is like, by which you can have anonymous questions or things like that. But I trust in my students at least, you know, that they will ask me question without any issue if they have any, right? Am I right or wrong here? Yes. I might be wrong, huh? <laughs> so do you think that I should ask, I should let you ask anonymous questions like anybody asking and, you know, uh, we don't know who is asking, but I don't know, you know, what would be a positive about it because uh, once I don't know who is asking, how can I answer that question according to that student? You know, I know every student of mine and I get to know this thing that who I'm addressing so that I can address it in that, that manner. Okay, so let's start then. Okay. So today I want to discuss about the scope, you know, I want to start with the scope uh, of variables in JavaScript, right? So everybody knows variables, right? Okay. So here, let me share my screen here. Okay. So here I have created a new folder for you. Its name is JavaScript scope, right? And let me have a new file over here with the name JavaScript scope.html, right? And uh, let me have another file over here, new file with the name JavaScript scope dot JS, right? So let me open these files. Let me open it over here. Right? So JavaScript scope dot HTML and let me put the basic boilerplate code here. So JavaScript scopes and uh, so each one knowing JavaScript. Let's go. So let me make a list item here. Another unordered list here, right? And first of all, let me tell you that there are There are 
three ways to declare variables in JavaScript, right? And these three ways are by using var, right? Then by using let, right? So this is this they have probably taken from math, right? In math, we say let x is equal to this, right? So they have taken that let from math, right? And then we have uh, cost. And uh, here we have a note that cost is in JavaScript, cost is little different. So JavaScript is a different language and different kind of language and cost is also very different, right? So let me share my browser screen and open it. Just a minute. So, so this is my browser. So this is localhost. Um, uh, web ramming 2020 and JavaScript scope, right? And here we have this file scope.html, right? So here it is telling that there are three ways to declare variables in JavaScript. Number one is var, number two is let, and number three is cost, right? First of all, let us see that uh, uh, that why we have these three variables, right? Historically, uh, JavaScript, you know, till 2015, the only way to declare a variable was var, right? The only way to declare a variable is var, right? And var is a beautiful variable declaration. It has a functional scope. It has a scope. Yeah, you need to unmute, right? So it has a functional scope, right? So var has a functional scope, right? What we do we mean by functional scope? That once we declare a variable within a function, it is available within that function. It's and a if local we, variable. Right. So, but you know, if you know Java or if you know C++, right? Or C, right? You know this thing that in C, Variables have what scope? Local and global scope. Local scope and what, when you call local scope, right? By the way, whatever you are calling global scope. So if your uh, var is not declared within a function, it is outside the function. It is global, right? It is available everywhere, right? Number one. And number two, if it is available, it is declared within a function. It is available throughout the function. Right, it is available throughout the function. So here, the scope is little. I'm, I'm highlighting this thing because in the back of the mind, we are coming from the background of C or Java, right? And once we come from the background of C and Java, the scope in the back of our mind is the block scope. You know, where we start the brace and where we end the brace scope is in between them, right? And once we go out of those uh, that brace block, right? So scope expires, right? Whereas this is not in, not the case with JavaScript var, right? JavaScript var has a scope of function. It is available in whatever function it is declared. And if it is not declared within a function, if it is declared outside a function, its scope is global. Are you getting me guys, right? So, so let me let me show you this thing. Uh, let me come over here and uh, so let me tell this thing uh, let me write something here so maybe we can make this thing into order list right this is an order list and here we make an unordered list and we say what war has a global scope if it is 
not declare in a function, right? And if a var is declared in a function, its scope is inside the function, right? Its scope is inside the function. So note that it is different from C where a variable has block scope, right? Got it guys? Okay. And there is one more thing to it, and that is that var is hosted. Var, once you declare a var, it is hosted at the top of the function, right? Now, this is something we have to experience, right? Before we go and talk further about it. Whereas, let me talk about let a little bit, right? So let me make notes over here for you also that uh, unordered list, right? So here, let has block scope, right? So let has block scope. So block mean curly braces, right? So once you declare something with let, it has block scope, right? Uh, if it is not in a block, it's global again, right? So if not in a block, it is again global right so mind this thing and then we have const right then we have const so let me mention here also sorry so const is like the cost of C, but totally different, <laughs> right? So my, my PhD supervisor used to say this thing, this thing is like this, but totally different, right? So let me tell you that how is the same and uh, it is again totally different, right? So let me see if the formatting is also going good. Reload. Yeah, it is going good, right? So cost is like, cost of C, but totally different. Um, and in scope, so scope wise, cost is like let, right? Scope wise cost is like let, right? So let us uh, see that what do we mean by all this? And in that process, we will understand so many other things. So let me let me just open JavaScript file for you and let me start populating it. So once we want to uh, hook up a JavaScript file uh, with the HTML file, what should we do? Yes. Script. Script, yes, very good. So we have script tag and within the script tag, within the script tag, we need to tell source is equal to what? Uh, JavaScript scope.js, right? So JS scope dot JS, right? So this is the file we want to couple with it and control S and come back over here. And so as we are over here, so let us, for example, define a variable. So for example, we can say var x so one more thing you know definitely you you already you, you must have noticed this thing that javascript is not a strict type language right where you have to declare whether a variable going is going to hold an int or a float or a long or an array right rather it is you know kind of loose type language where you know it would be decided on the fly that what is 
you know kind of going to be held in that particular variable right and this is something good about JavaScript, but since you know people are not 100% of the time fully conversant with the language dynamics, so they have created TypeScript on top of it, where you know TypeScript tries to tighten up the condition a little bit right? rather than other cosmetic things being added by TypeScript, right? So once you you get to hold of JavaScript, so go on and learn TypeScript also. It is a it is quite a good skill to you know get. Because TypeScript is extensively used in Angular uh, framework, right? So we say var x, say we just say var x, right? So it is like container is being uh, allocated, right? We say var x and save it and let's say console log, console log x, right? Cons console log x means that now x would be X would be uh, output, you know, it is going to output X on the console, right? And where is the console? Console the, is like right over here, right? So we right click over here, uh, inspect element, right? And we open console over here. Since I don't like to work a lot on console, so I would not be telling you so many other things about console that you know you can use command line console also and uh, you can have some kind of auto load server also where you know you make any changes it would be reflected automatically. So let's forget about these things and just try to reload this file, right? Sir, so yes, like when we should use console, sir. So my deal, the deal here is that for example, if we come over here say msn.com right microsoft uh, you know page so if we want to see that hey what are they doing here inspect element right so just going sideline just to answer your questions right so here if you see that you can see the entire code of this website right at least this web page so it is taking some time to load it, right? So this is the entire code for this page, right? It's showing HTML of this page, right? So if you, for example, if you want to see a particular element that how is being formatted, you can go and point to that element, right? You can go and point to that element, it is, would be highlighted, right? And once it is highlighted, you can see this thing that how is being, you know, uh, rendered so it is in the in a list item tag and then there is an anchor tag and then within an anchor tag they have image tag right so you you can get hold of this thing number one number two once you are doing javascript right and this is this is where we are going we are using it right now once you are using javascript and uh, you want to see that hey you know and we are not say for example sure that how is javascript behaving at certain point we can actually go ahead and console log, you know, uh, over there in JavaScript, and uh, it would be reflected down there in our uh, console, and we get to know that hey, what's going on over there, and you know, this is a great tool to debug our code, right? So, for example, with this page, if I go to debugger, uh, so not debugger console, so it will show us so many things over here. So, just give it a time to to load. And it is telling you that what are, what is going behind the scene to get this page rendered, right? So it has post requests, get requests, so many things going on, and definitely we are going to learn them quite a few, right? So and here, you know, it tells us that if there is some error going on, for example, DOM DOM expectation, the operation is insecure, right? So here, you know, some operation it is trying to do which is insecure. So sometimes it happens that uh, you know, browsers are very dynamic uh, piece of uh, software. So something they have written and this browser is not uh, supporting. So this is throwing error for that. So all these things can be seen in the console. And in these inspection, uh, you know, uh, inspect elements tools, you have like uh, inspector, you have pointer, you have inspector, you have console, you have debugger. So here, you know, we sit and debug JavaScript code, right? That, uh, you know, if it is not behaving properly, we can go over here and debug it. We have style editor where we can edit the styles. In inspector also, if you inspect a particular element, you can see CSS over here, right? 
So in this middle panel, you have the CSS, and then on the right-hand side, you have the box model, right? We have, uh, we have style editor, we have performance that, you know, which application or which part of the page is taking how much time, what is the memory consumption, what is the network traffic going on, right? So this is the network traffic that where is the get post, get request is going, post request is going, we are going to study them all. Then here, you know, it is telling, it tells us the storage that what are the cookies, sessions, you know, such things, such variables, right? So all these uh, things are available for you. So, so this is a great, great tool down there. And basically 99% of the people don't know that this thing even exists in, uh, in browser, right? Definitely we developers know this thing and every one of them, and we work a lot with it, right? But 99% of the people who are like not computer scientists or not developers, they probably don't know that it even exists. Right, and uh, sometimes I use it uh, for password, you know, say for example, I have forgotten my password for a particular website, right? And I go over there and browser is uh, filling it by using autofill. So I can go over there and just, you know, in that input, I just highlight that input field and then what do I do? We can put text instead of password. Yeah, so basically go to that input field and for the type, you know, it would be password over there and you just give uh, type for uh, type is equal to uh, text, right? And it would be shown as a string. So we, we can you, we do all these things over here in the console, right? So I would be working quite a lot uh, with it, right? So don't worry, right? And have you got your answer? Yes. Sir. Okay, great. Okay, so I was saying that as it got un uh, loaded, so you can see that it has shown undefined, right? So, so we said var x, and then we have console log x, so it is saying that it is undefined, right? Because we have not given it or assigned it any value. Now, if we want, we can assign any value to it. For example, we can say, we can say x is equal to, x is equal to 4.56, right? So now this is the number we have assigned to x, right? So if we come back over here and now if we console log x, it will give us its value, right? So we come over here, save it, right? And then go back over here, reload it, right? You can see this thing that previously it was undefined. Now it has got a value 4.56 or whatever the value is, right? Uh, we come back here, say we say x is equal to, now x was a number, now we decided that x is going to be string, right? So we say x is equal to any string, right? x is equal to any string. So if we say x is equal to any string and we console log x, right? So now you can see that it would be a string, right? So it has mentioned that it is any string, right? Any question guys, right? Okay, so coming back over here, similarly, if we want, we can make x into an array, right? So we can say x is equal to an array. So this is an array. And say, for example, this array is going to have uh, a string, maybe a number, maybe a Boolean, right? So basically, you know, one array is containing so many things. So we come back over here, reload it. Uh, so I did not do console log after that. So if I console log X now, save it, and you can see that now it is going to show us that it is, a, it is an array now, right? So this is an array now. Right guys, any questions so far? Okay, so once it is an array, now you can see that we can assign, we can associate so many things with it. So array is an object, right? So this array is an object and this object has so many things. So for example, one object is one of its properties length, right? So for example, if you want to see this thing that how much is the length of this, uh, how much is the length of this uh, 
object x so we can say console log x dot length right console log x dot length so it is going to give you uh, its length right With length means number of elements in the in the in this array right so we come over here reload it right and you can see that it has shown us three can you see this three so if you just unfold it a little bit more so you can see that this array object has a prototype array and this prototype has all these various functions right so for example uh, it has a function with the name push right and it has a function with the name pop right let's try using these functions so we come over here for example we say x dot push right x dot push right and say whatever you want to push it uh, push here say for example i want to push y right may, let me make another variable y so if i want to declare a variable again so i can say var y is equal to i am y right so we say x dot push y right so once we say this thing and let's console log x so you will see that this uh, x is pushed into uh, x is pushed into uh, sorry y is pushed into x right so save it and go back over here reload it right and you can see that this array is now a string 3.22 true and i'm y right so y is pushed into it right if we want similarly we can pop something out of it for example we can say var z is equal to x dot pop right so it will pop something from the string from the array sorry and and place it in z and if we console log z so you will see that you will get hold of uh, z so let's see what is z so we come back over here reload it and you can see that z is i am y so whatever you pushed previously right it is it has been popped back right got it guys any questions so far so if you want to if you want to iterate uh, through so look the deal is that now i thought that maybe you're understanding array so let me teach you a little bit of array also right so so definitely you know we have to teach it at some point so why not at this point so we come over here say for example you want to iterate through the array right so we can come over here for example we can say for right so for var i is equal to zero i is less than array dot length so maybe x dot length right and uh, i plus plus and maybe we want to console log console log that element right so let me console log some delimiter here so that you can see this this is existing after this so console log x dot i right save it reload it you can see that you know we have uh, all three of them are string 3.22 and true all of them are uh, being you know uh, displayed so you can see this thing that uh, let me show you for example this was one way to iterate through the array right another way to cons you know iterate through the array is this right let me show you this thing over here so for example if we come to this array and you know unfold it again and go to is prototype so you can see that for example here we have another function uh, associated with array and that is for each 
right? Can you see this thing for each over here, right? So let's see how does for each work, right? So we come over here, we say, we come over here and we say, whatever the name of the array is, x dot for each. Okay. Um, let me just remove this for the time being, right? X dot for each, right? And here we need to mention this thing that what do we want to do with each element of X? Right? Here we want to mention, okay, I think that by looking at people's uh, expressions, I believe that this would be a little too much over here. So let me just not do for each for now. So let me stop here, right? And uh, maybe talk a little bit more about the scope, right? So in order to talk a little bit more about the scope, right? Let me just write a function. Or maybe I will uh, do this thing that I create a new file over here. So I come over here and create a new file uh, with the name JavaScript scope two dot Yes, and uh, I can close this file over here and I can go to HTML file and instead of linking javascript.js, uh, I can link this new file, right? So the deal here is that once you want to test uh, one file, you can go ahead and link the other file over here, right? It makes sense. Does it make sense? I just don't want to create a new HTML file. Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, great. So, control S and we come over here. So, scope. So, here, say for example, we want to declare a function, right? So, if we want to declare a function, so this is the basic structure of a function, right? We have the keyword function and then function name and then parents. And then within parents, you mention the various parameters you want to give, right? And then this is the block, right, over here. So if we come over here, we say uh, name, age, right? Name and age. And say we, and by the way, uh, this is a little bit step back from the last lecture. In the last lecture, I actually showed you that what can JavaScript do for you, right? Just a glimpse of it, right? And so that if once I go into these basics, you don't, uh, you know, kind of think this thing that, hey, uh, how is it thing related with our web programming, right? So I'm just stepping back so that you, I can provide you a little bit more firm background in JavaScript because in the next three weeks, we would be doing all but JavaScript, right? So we need to have better background in JavaScript now, especially when we want to do Node also, you know, okay. So, and then, you know, definitely we are going to link up all this knowledge with the actual web programming thing, right? You will see all these things in action actually, right? Okay, so coming back here, let me just show you one thing, just to inspire you. Say for example, uh, one of my code, which is running on, uh, you know, in a project right now. So if I come over here, so you think this is, this is one piece of JavaScript code. And this JavaScript code actually provides uh, the payment portal, right? So basically, you know, I, I'm having payment portal and then we have discount coupons and everything. So that is processed. And if somebody cancels, that is also processed here. So this is all JavaScript, you know, once you know how to make these basic functions, you can get hold of this. Thing also. So just, just want to tell you that all these things are related. Okay, coming back. So for example, we have this function and we can give a function name and uh, we, we give the function name in camel case on, uh, normally. So we can 
tell us that tell user, right? So this function is going to take a name and age and it is going to console log uh, the, sorry, the clients, clients name is, so we can put a plus over here and we can give a name and then plus and then and age is and here we can give the age right so this is a simple function right once we'll call it so once we'll call it it is going to tell the name and age of this person save it right and once we want to call it we can call it like this by writing the function name tell name right tell name and here we can tell the name say for example name is how what, what could be the name maybe raj sahu and maybe age is 30 save it right and let's go back here reload this file now this second javascript is linked up okay reference tell name is not defined okay maybe we have function name is list. tell user sir oh tell user yes you are right so we have messed up the name. So tell user, right? Thank you very much with capital U, I believe, camel case, right? Save it and we come back over here, reload it, right? So here you can, client's name is Raj, uh, Raj Sahu and age is 30, right? Have you got the idea that how does the function work? So here, for example, so we can call it as many times as we want. So for example, we can copy this, control C, control V, and maybe give another name, uh, Sanjana, Sanjana, and maybe some other name, maybe Frank Lewis, Frank Lewis, and maybe age is 60, right? So for example, you come over here, reload it, Right, so client's name is Frank Lewis and age is 60, right? So very simple, simple examples, but these humble things, you know, definitely going to count. Say for example, you don't want to console log, you want to show it as alert. So we can say alert, and we can put this entire string within that alert, right? So we can copy it, just copy it, and place it over here, right? So now it will console log this thing also, and it will show us an alert also. So, so the client's name is Raj Sahu and age is 30, right? And you know, again, this second alert is also coming, right? So basically, if you want to show alert, so this is the way you show the alert also, right? Any questions so far? Right, got it? Okay, so if we define a variable over here, maybe right over here, and we say var, x is equal to what should be x right maybe 10 right and let's console log x right so just console log say the var x is defined within tell me, right? And here we can have plus x. Tell user. Tell user, okay, tell user, you're right. Right, thank you very much, right? And let me just, uh, you know, comment out this alert because otherwise we will alert, alert, you know, so we come back over here and saved it and then we reload it and you can see this thing that wall access defined within the tell user and it is 10, right? So whenever you call, you can access this X, right? Understandable. 
So if we want to access this x outside the function, we say, we say console log x, right? So let us see what do we get over here. Save it, reload it, right? So reference x is not defined, right? So basically once you try to access it outside x, outside the function, its reference is not defined. Understandable? Okay, we come back over here. Say for example, so, x is not defined here. Okay, so we come back over here, say for example, we come over here and we say x is equal to 10, right? We say we don't uh, mention uh, var keyword, right? We just say x is equal to 10, right? And now it is within the function and let's see what happens now. And this is something I wanted to show you also. So anybody knows what is going to happen? So let's see. So we come back over here and reload it. And you can see that it has shown us 10, right? So if we don't declare a variable, it is, it is by default declared in the global scope, right? So this is, this is a little bit dangerous thing also that sometimes we just forget about uh, de declaration of a variable with the help uh, of keyword var. And once we do, don't declare it, right? Like we have done over here that x is equal to 10 and it was not declared before, right? So once it is not declared, uh, so it automatically declared in the global scope, right? So don't do this thing. This is this is this feature. If it is a feature, so it should not be normally used, right? So once we declare it, then its scope is lo is local to that function. Understandable, guys. Any questions so far? Okay, great. So. Now suppose we have a variable y, right? Let's declare a variable y. Uh, let's declare a variable y. We say var y is equal to nothing, right? Var y, right? And then we console log y and you will see that y would be undefined because it is just declared and not uh, being used, right? And we call this uh, function, and in this function we say y is equal to y is equal to 100. And let's come over here, and we console log y. Right. Once we call the function, we console log y, and we come over here and reload it you can see this thing that y is undefined here, right? Y is undefined here and then, as we have used uh, that function after the utilization of that function, the y has got the value of 100, right? So now it can be, you know, once it is used inside, it is the same variable which is in the global scope and it has taken the value of 100, right? So let me do one more thing here. Save it. Right, you can see this thing that here y is undefined right and uh, uh, and over here also in the beginning where is that beginning uh, console log let me write something over here also so that we can distinguish the two at declaration so 
So save it. Reload it. So here, add declaration, y is undefined. Then y is undefined even over here, right? Over, over here, once the function is declared, but once the function is executed, then y value has, y has taken a value of 100, right? So, so the deal is that once you use a global variable, which is y over here, within a function, its value, you know, whatever you give its value, its value retains, right? So its value does not change. Any questions so far, guys? Shalender ready, you're okay? Okay, great. Any other question, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Okay, so we come back over here. So we have just declared a function tell name and we have discussed a lot many things about uh, these variables and uh, things like that. So let me do one more thing over here. Let, let me save it. Let me not uh, overload uh, one file with so many things. So let me write a new file. Let me make a new file over here. Maybe let's make a new file. New file and let me name it JavaScript scope.js. Uh -uh. It is already existing. 3.js and let me link this file up. So let me come over here and link up this file js scope 3 dot js and uh, let me just close this too and let me work on it right okay so i come back over here say for example i say that what an array is equal to, let me make an array. Uh, US, India, Pakistan, China, uh, UK, right? Just writing some random string, right? So we come over here and we say, let me use for, for first of all. So for array name is an array, right? And let me console log them. Okay. This is not something I want to show you. I want to show you this. If I log i, right, console log i, so any idea that what are we going to get? All items in array. Huh? All items of array. No, on line seven, right? What, what, what are we going to get on line seven? Hmm? Uh, oh, five times only this. So let's save it and let's see that what are we going to get. Only so reload it. So you can see that it is five, okay. right? Why is it five? So here it was zero, one, two, three, four, and then as, as it terminated, right, the value of uh, index was five. So this value is retained, right? But if we use it in another way, right? So let me use it like this. For example, let me write another for loop here. And instead, okay, and here an array. Right, an array. And then I console log it also. And after coming back, maybe I want to make it J, right? Let me make it J. Let me make it J and let me make it J, right? But this is not a big deal. 
the deal here is that I want to do it with the help of let. Instead of doing it with the help of var, let me do it with the help of let, right? So I say let j is equal to this and this is the for loop. And here, and here I console log j. So now you see that you are going to get undefined, right? So save it and reload it, right? So as you reload it, you can see this thing that you got i, right, which is five, but the reference for j is lost. It is saying that j is not defined, right? It is saying that j is not defined, right? So as I said that j, because we define j with the help of let, so let has block scope. So its scope was within this block. For example, if you want to, if instead of array, you want to just log j, right? You will see that this, this uh, you know, j is existing here. Save it and reload the page. You can see this, that this was i and then j is existing here, right? But right after the exiting of the for loop, J does not exist, right? So this is the basic difference between let and var. So sometimes it happens that people coming from the background of C sharp, C++ or Java, they get confused in the utilization of the keyword var, right? Because var has a scope of function. Var has a scope of what? Var has a scope of function. Whereas let has a scope of block as other languages do. Got it guys, any questions so far? Okay, so having said this thing, so let me comment out this thing and let me say, let has a block scope. Right? So let has a block scope, whereas var has a, has a functional scope. So since this var was not defined within a function, so its scope became global. Let me ask everybody, uh, you know, let me take a little bit of uh, you know, this session that let me ask everybody if they have got it. So Kamalish, have you got it? Yes. Okay, Sanjana. Yes, sir. Ankit Rao. Yes, sir. Bharat. Yes, sir. Srikant. Sankit, sorry, Sankit. Sankit, have you got it? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Pridvi. Yes, sir. Shlinder. Yes, sir. Menthan. Mulali Dhar. Yes, sir. And Danush, have you got it? Yes, sir. And Naresh. Yes, sir. Everybody got it? Let me see if somebody's left. Somebody's left? Okay, great. Good. So, so this was a little bit. Let me, okay, let me utilize this file to tell you one more thing, right? Say for example, we come over here, we say const, a const, just any name, right? Say const is equal to four, uh, is equal to an array, right? And this array is maybe 2.33, right? This array is having one element, which is 2.33, right? And I say that console log a const, Right, it is going to log out this array. C -O, small o. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So come back over here, reload it. Right, you can see that it has logged out array 2.33, right, it is declared. Now, if I try to do this thing, that a const is equal to Another thing, another 
entity, right? Something else, right? And let's see what happens. So we come back over here, reload it. Right, it is saying that invalid assignment to cost a cost, right? So we cannot have, we cannot have it reassigned, right? Because it is a cost, so we cannot reassign it, right? But let me do one more thing. Let me come over here and let me say, so I cannot do it. This cannot be done, right? But if I come over here and I say a const sub zero is equal to 100, right? Or maybe another entity. And let me just log out a const. So, and let us see what happens, right? And let's reload the page. So you can see that previously it was, array was 2.33, now array is another entity, right? So the deal here is that this is what I said, that cost is like the cost of other languages, but totally different, right? That you cannot reassign it to any other thing. But if it is an array or an object, which I will discuss later on, then you can play with this internals, right? You can change its internals. You can even push something into it, right? You can even pop something out of it, right? So this can be done. Are you getting me guys, right? So this is something, once we say something is cost, so generally it happens that this comes to our mind that probably now it is a constant, right? We can never touch it, we cannot not change it, but no more in JavaScript, right? Once we say that something is cost, we must assign it a value and now, <coughs> I'm sorry, and now we cannot reassign it, right? This is what the cost is, but whatever the available functions for that particular item are, we can implement uh, those, uh, those operations on it, right? We can push elements if it is a, if it is an array, if, we, if it is a string, we can even concatenate other string with this string and so on, right? So basically, you know, we cannot reassign things with it. Have you got the idea, guys? Okay, so, so we come back over here. So let me put a note over here. We cannot reassign a cost, but we can alter, we can change its internal components, right? for array and object, right? Got it guys, any questions so far? So I'm making these small, small files, right? So that you get hold of these basic concepts in JavaScript, right? Okay, let me come back and let me make another file over here. And this is JS4, right? Yes, and let me have a new file. So what is the name? Uh, JavaScript scope.js and this is four, right? And let me close this three down and let me link up this four over here. Okay. So you have seen functions, right? So for example, we have a function right maybe tell user right it's going to take a, a parameter name it's going to take age right and we can say console log this 
users name is so we can use plus for string concatenation so here we can have name plus and the pages so we can have plus each right so we can use this like this right so uh, just a side note i don't like this a lot but just you know since this is language so we can do something like this also console log so instead of putting this in double quotes or single quotes for that matter i can write something like this this users name is so i want to insert a variable so instead of breaking it and doing plus i can do this thing that instead of putting it in double quotes let me put in in backticks so javascript is a language where they have even used this backtick this innocent character backtick which was never used before and it was staying in rest and peace before the occurrence of javascript so they decided no 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 why not why this is such a big wastage of money that this key is here and we are not using it right so let us use this key also right so this username is within bad text we can say dollar within bracket and then you know within this block and then we get we give the name right and age is right so we can use again dollar then this brackets and then each right so we can say this thing also this is the same as this on the top but little bit easy maybe but people people are using this thing a lot these days right so just wanted to mention it that we can use it like this also right so this is tell user one right let me say that this is tell user one so this is one way to declare this function another way to declare this declare a function is like this we copy this control c control v right and we cut it this thing from here and we say what this is a function and then a semicolon like that so this is this is known as uh, this is a you know variable declaration of a function right so we can define a function so this is now this part over here is known as an anonymous function right so this is just a function right function definition and we have def we have given this function definition a name tell user 1 maybe tell user 2 right because we don't want to mess up with the every declaration of variable right so now we have we have defined this uh, variable and assign it equal to a equal to a function and if we want we can actually use it right we can say tell user 2 and maybe we say that uh uh neha 36 right so let's see let's save it and let's use uh, you know Read it. Right. User name is Neha and age is thirty six. Right. So basically, this is another way to declare functions. Right. So these are two ways to declare the function. Right. And then there is another way we which we want to talk about now. So have you got the idea? Okay. Now they said, okay, this is such a big mess, man. This is such a big mess. that we have this long long word function over here right so we don't want to have this long long word function over here right so we come over here copy this paste it so we don't want to have this long word function over here connect to the internet i'm sorry right 
So we have not, we don't want this long, long word function over here. So we remove this long word function from here, right? And we put it over here, an arrow, right? Put an arrow over here like this, right? And, uh, and define it like this. Maybe this is three. Now this is known as arrow function. Right now, this is what this is arrow function, right? So this is an arrow function. So they say that remove the function keyword. So so they say that it will you know reduce the network traffic. And the main issue was that you know when JavaScript was kind of globalized, that hey everybody is using it. So Microsoft had this you know, issue for quite a bit of time because in C sharp, they had these Lambda functions or arrow functions already there. So they wanted that JavaScript should have these functions because their developers will feel easy in JavaScript. Right, anybody from C sharp background? No one is from C sharp background? Okay, so C sharp had this kind of function before, right? So they decided, okay, let's let's use these functions, right? So let me just copy this and comment it and paste it over here. And let me call this tell user three, right? Save it and let me reload it. function arguments. Let me see what is the issue. Let me see what is the issue. So tell user is uh, oh, okay, and we need to have an equal sign over here, right? So tell, and then we have to have a semicolon here, right? So tell user three. Maybe we can define a select. Tell user three is this arrow function, right? So this is an arrow function, and then you know we can now, if we reload it, right? So this is an arrow function, and this username is Neha, and age is thirty six, right? So you can see that we have got this arrow functions also over here. Say for example, we have another thing. Say for example, we come over here and we have something like this. This can also be done with the help of uh, war, right? So we can say, for example, war and uh, say tell, uh, tell user four is equal to say, for example, just name just one variable, right? One parameter. So your fingers better know that, you know, what are you coding instead of your brain, right? So we come over here and we say, uh, say console log uh, the, let's use backticks, the clients, name is name, right? So basically with one variable, right? So we come over here, save it and uh, reload it. Uh, didn't we call it? We probably did not call it, let's call it, right? So let's uh, name it four and this is control C, control V and uh, we have this maybe Victor. Victor, right? So tell user four, we want to call for tell user four. Right, so tell user four. 
So we reload it. Right? So client's name is Victor, right? What's big deal about it? Just only this thing that if we have only one name, we can even remove this. Right, we can even remove this bracket, right? So we come, we can just save it and we can say that tell user four is equal to name and this, right? So basically, you know, so you once you see something like this, maybe sometimes people will even write like this thing. So they will put it all in one line. Right, they are going to put it all in one line and once you see something like this and they will even try to drop the semicolon also, which I hate, right? And now you get to know this thing, what's this written, right? So sometimes people will get confused, hey, what is this? You know, what is this written? So don't get confused, right? So basically, this is a form of arrow function. Oh, sir, and can we also use const for function? Uh, yeah, we can also use const, definitely, right? Okay. Yeah. If we are not going to reassign it, we, are, we can definitely assign it as const, definitely. Yes. Right? Oh. Great. So save it and let's run it if something is not missing. Right? So my client's name is Victor Y is running. So the main thing is that whether you like it or not, you know, one day you are going to see this kind of code, right? And you get to know this thing that, hey, what's happening over here? Right? And as I said earlier, that JavaScript, JavaScript is like this, that if one day we decide that, okay, okay, Hindi is, uh, is a language which is not being spoken uh, throughout India, right? So some people speak English, some people speak Hindi, some people speak Telugu, right? Some people speak Bengali, right? So let's do this thing that let's mix all these languages together and maybe make an Indian language, right? Which is the mixture of English, Hindi, uh, Telugu, Bengali, maybe a few more languages, right? And then we say that, okay, we from today we will speak Indian. So what's going to happen? Yes. Nobody will understand. <laughs> it would be a big confusion, right? <laughs> Some people will speak Bengali and they will claim that they are speaking Indian, right? Some people will speak Telugu and they will, uh, you know, claim that they are speaking Indian. And some people will mix Hindi and English and will claim they are speaking Indian, right? So this is exactly what happened with JavaScript, right? So JavaScript is basically beautiful function oriented language, right? And when they made this ECMA, uh, you know, consortium, they said, okay, okay, Java people is also going to use it. So let's put some Java flavor into it, right? And then, you know, uh, Microsoft said, hey, we are also big community, you know, why to leave us alone, right? So let's have our style of code inside it also. Now JavaScript has every sort of animal inside it, right? So, and this is now your responsibility that you make your, your own style in JavaScript, right? For example, if you decide that, hey, I'm going to use arrow functions, right? So use arrow functions throughout then, right? Because if you use one time a function and then an arrow function and then a function, and you know, some, sometimes you, you may get confused that, hey, what is this thing, arrow, arrow, you know? You, will, you may even forget that this was even a function, right? You may even forget that this is even a function. So yeah, so this is something very peculiar about JavaScript that, uh, you know, JavaScript has so many mixture of flavors inside it. It's very difficult to see that what's happening here. And there are tons of different ways to do the same job and every way is good. The only thing is that every way is done with a different, you know, style of programming. So you have to develop your own style within JavaScript. Yes, Shilinda, you want to ask something or you want to tell something? Shilinda is busy, I think, with Menthon. You guys are sitting in the same room? Okay. 
So. I got coming to my last camera. Oh, you have a question? No, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Have you got it, everybody? Right? So I was telling you that what are different ways to declare functions, right? So coming back, coming back over here. So always are good and, you know, you can get hold of them as you desire to. Okay. So have you, my quick question, have you uh, started making your CV? Web page? Very good. How many of you have started making it? Very good. Why not all of you? Good, good. Okay, let me let me see, you know, let me spend some, I think that I, I will stop here teaching over here and spend a few, few minutes in uh, in discussing what have you done so far in your CV so that other people can get inspired to, uh, to do it, right? Today I'm not doing evaluation. I will just have a browser, you know, uh, I will just browse through them and I will give you suggestions, right? So let me stop recording here and uh, let me then have you share my, you know, screen with me. Okay, any questions so far otherwise? Okay, stop share. And stop recording.